Hi guys, if it's Tuesday, it's Dan and Dirty Woods Craft. Stay with me. Okay, guys, today we're going to talk about a piece of gear you don't hear a lot about. It exists. That's the kettle. You know, when I was doing my living history, um, what we call trekking back in that day, which is very much bushcraft, but in the 1700s. We carried haversacks, we carried minimum kitten gear, and the object of the game was to emulate the image of a long hunter of the 1700s pre-Revolutionary War during the French and Indian War time period. And we dressed appropriately and carried muzzleloaders and etc. And all of our gear was period for that. And you'd be amazed how much of that gear from that day would still be viable today. I could very easily do my bushcraft, woodscraft right now with my historic kit because it fulfilled the same function. We didn't have a ferro rod, we had flint and steel. I still had a good knife, still had a tomahawk, still had a bedroll, still had all those things. The weight would have been different, of course. I mean, my uh, oil cloth weighed about four and a half pounds for my uh, 10 by 10 tarp. But beyond that, same idea. Well, one of my favorite pieces of kit that I had for a cooking vessel was a kettle. Now, this is a modern kettle made out of either titanium or aluminum. And uh, a lot of you have seen these type of kettles. But I found it so very useful as a one-pot option, okay? And using it in the modern time is still a very usable. Now what most people see that is, is a tea kettle. I'm gonna boil water and use the little pouring spout to pour and make up whatever. And it's perfectly suited for that. But this is also a pot you can cook in it. And I carry a little kit in it. Now, little improvements you wanna make. The lids, as they come, and this one was made by the uh, GSD, I guess that is. I ain't got my glasses on, but GS, whatever. That's who made it. And I've had this thing probably 10 years. The lids come a little bit loose. Now, what I do to tighten up the lids is I get it onto a surface, you know, not steel, but like a hard surface. And I'm going to take and start tapping the inside of that rim with something like, not a hammer, but I use, I think I used a heavy wooden spoon. And just start tapping and turning it like that. And that will flare out slightly that rim. So that now when I put it up there, I put in one side like that. And then on the other side, you got to kind of pop it. But it means it'll stay on there upside down. Using this as a cooking pot, I can take and put whatever I would normally eat in it. My little cooking kit I carry in it right now is a cut-off MRE spoon. And I've got one of them Swiss folder cups, the big cups, inside of it. Okay. Now, that bottom is big enough, and I've got enough access. I can actually fry a little on that bottom, can I? Something small. You know, put a little oil in it, drop in it. I can deep fry in this. This would be good for deep fry, where I can put like a full inch of oil into it and drop in whatever meat I want and fish it out with a pair of tongs or a fork whenever I'm done. And I've used it for that. Put it up on a good solid base so it's not going to move around and you just use it as open deep fryer. Okay? I've also used this as an immersion heater where, like I've talked about in earlier videos, I want to keep my pot clean. So I've carried my food with me. And then I've transferred it, when I'm ready to eat, into a Ziploc bag. I then sit the Ziploc bag into this and then fill it for water all the way around it and sit it on the fire and let it boil for 10 minutes. Pour the water off, open the bag up, eat it. It's piping hot food. Pull the bag out, clean pot, quick and easy. It weighs nearly nothing, you know. And once I've adjusted that lid so it's that way, it don't rattle hardly. Yeah, it will a little bit, but not a lot. And that makes it very useful. Now, this one I think was originally gray, and you can see it's blackened for it's been used so much. But these little kettles have a distinct advantage. Now, for those of you that want to make pine tea and other things, something you'll see out of Scandinavia is they'll then take a, uh, the end of a pine limb where it's a big old clump of uh, 
pine needles and they'll stick it in here like a filter to pour and let it filter out stuff. I've seen them do that. I haven't, but I've seen it done that way. And that's a small enough hole I can easily put a plug into that or I can easily take a piece of aluminum foil and crunch over the outside of it to keep something from escaping. This is also a good way to soak certain foods like I'm going to be doing dry. And that was something I did a lot in the historic time period. I carried uh, corn, beans, things like that that were dry, dehydrated, and I needed to hydrate them. Well, I could take this, because remember in the 1700s we didn't have plastic. I would take my kettle that I had at that time, which is similar in design, but was made out of, uh, I think, brass. And you put the food into it and let it soak overnight so in the morning it was a very quick cooking time okay so a kettle might be a viable option as opposed to a bush pot a bush pot having the handles is very advantageous but this having the handle on top is also very advantageous it's very easily this thing's got a raised handle that you can easily hook a stick under to take the lid on and off but I'm gonna tell you after you flared it you're gonna have to pop it off you're going to have to just sit it up there loose like that. And it will sit there loose. And you're going to have to then hook it and pick it up if you want to keep checking or stirring. Because once you pop it in place, it ain't coming off. But that way when I tip it, it don't pour. It don't come off. So, in conclusion, guys. This is one of my pieces of kit that I got hanging up in my study that I've used a lot, but I haven't talked about a lot because I've talked about bush pots, I've talked about Boy Scout kits, I've talked about several different things, but for a one pot, um, I grew up using the U.S. Army Canteen Cup, as I've said many times. I can get by just about anything I need with just an Army Canteen Cup. One step up was this, okay? One step up would then be like that Boy Scout, that vintage Boy Scout kit I got with multiple abilities. If I'm going to be preparing multiple types of foods, that would not be a bad choice. And then one step up, that's my Pathfinder Bush Pot with all the things. That's a major cook kit. And then one step up from that, I have a box that I haven't shown yet. That's when we're going family camping, trunk camping, and you've got, you know, 10 people going and stuff like that, and I'm setting up fire irons, Dutch ovens, etc. I'm gonna be a camp cook. That's when that big box goes. So you need layers, and I stress in all my videos, to answer what the need is. If all I'm doing is going out and I just need to heat up water, ta-da, or canteen cup or a small round cup on the bottom of my grill, that works just fine. If I'm wanting to do some cooking like all of this is dehydrated but I got this one meal I'm gonna cook in I can cook a meal in that I can boil I can fry I can whatever inside that all of it can be done if you simply think about it and apply the need to the pot hope this gives you some ideas guys please leave any questions or comments below and until next time I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys have a great day guys